Hey guys, Drifter here. Today I have a very meta video for you about small YouTuber problems. This is actually a response video to JDodds1. His video and channel are linked down there in the description because he made a thank you video for me about the last shout out for a few minutes and then the other half of it was about small YouTuber problems and he said some things that really hit home for me, that really touched me and got me thinking about all kinds of different stuff. So this is the second shout out to JDodds1 in a week and you need to stop being so relevant, sir, because I've only got so many shout outs. But I used to do a series on this channel called YouTube 101. You can probably find it in the playlist somewhere. And I do tutorials for Elgato, all kinds of YouTube stuff, uh, from thumbnails to video quality, audio, title, tag, description. But despite all of this, some of the most common questions I get, they all come in the same vein, are, is it still possible to get famous on YouTube? Can small channels still grow on YouTube? Has it consolidated such that the big get big and the small get nothing? Is it too late for me to start a channel? Are there any hope for us that aren't all already YouTube famous, and by the way, I don't consider myself in that category, but they're talking about the syndicates and the Bayesian Canadians and the PewDiePies and all that kind of stuff, and the answer is yes. Overwhelmingly, absolutely yes, you can still grow your small channel on YouTube. That can definitely happen because as you, I mean, I, I study my own analytics and stats every day. I check on other people. I see what they're doing. I try to, I follow the market and keep up with things. And every single day, and I do mean every day, I see some new gaming YouTuber, some vlogger, some person I have never heard of in my entire life just blowing up with subscribers with 1 million, 2 million, 3, 4, or five, I can't even keep track of how many millions of people gaining 50,000 subscribers in a day because of their, usually just because their content went viral, and that's usually because it's good content. And this happens on a daily basis. There are so many new faces in gaming, or so many old faces that finally hit their stride and their channels exploded and have done fantastic. And this is the great thing about the internet, is that it's infinitely specialized. The internet doesn't have to be mass appeal. You can and specialize and subspecialize and niche and compartmentalize as much as you want and there's a nearly infinite amount of people out there interested in whatever it is that you're talking about and whatever it is that you're doing and that's why I almost never tell anybody that their idea for a video or their idea for a city a series is a bad idea because some of the dumbest craziest most illogical and crazy things out there have worked and worked fantastically think about how many YouTube channels or series or shows that really really aren't mass appeal, that are really specialized, or kind of weird in a lot of ways, but they're really popular and they really work and resonate with an astonishing amount of people. And I kind of like to think about this kind of like the plot to anime. It's almost every single anime ever made has a really bananas off the wall plot, but it somehow works just for that particular story, and that's how YouTubers kind of are. And no, but seriously, if you enjoy what you're doing, if you really put your passion into it and you keep at it, other people will notice. It might take months. It might take years, it might take ages, but people do notice and they do catch on. J. Dodds talked a lot about how I started YouTube back in the MW2 days, and he talked about this analogy of raindrops, like when it first starts raining, you can notice the individual raindrops and you can kind of pay attention to them and that kind of thing, but as the rain continues, they all just fall into puddles and they get lost, and that's kind of the noise compared, especially Call of Duty. I do Call of Duty almost exclusively, but there's like 40,000 COD channels now, so it's very easy to get lost in that, and it's true, but it's not quite too. Yeah, I did in-depth back in MW2 days, but I did it on Machinima. I had almost nothing on this channel right now. Like, I was not even allowed to post on my channel until midway through Black Ops 1. Like, Machinima prevented me from posting on my channel, and even though other people were getting partnered, they were telling me not to post and only post on... There was a big management snafu, but anyway. I didn't get a start on this commentary thing right and proper until, like, you know, midway through Black Ops 1, and my content never really caught on with too many people until close to the end of MW3, kind of start of Black Ops 2, which is relatively late to start. There were already massive, super popular COD channels at the time, but I stuck with it and I really believed in what I was doing and in-depth and education and all that kind of stuff, and it did catch on. It wasn't the... I had a huge explosion during Black Ops 2, don't get me wrong, like the last half of Black Ops 2 is crazy for me, probably the craziest time I've ever had on YouTube. But it's not just me, it was the same with Chaos X Silencer and Prestigious Key. Both of these are really big, important 
important Call of Duty channels now, but I remember when these guys were, and they'll probably see this, like nobodies, when they had no subscribers, when nobody knew who they were, when they were tiny channels, and now they're really popular because they were really passionate about what they do and they stuck with it for the long run. But all that said, it's, it's not easy. Being a small YouTuber is not easy. You can put in a lot of hard work and still be unappreciated sometimes, but the trick I always found is that you need to be consistent with your schedule, and you need to set a schedule that works for you. If that's daily, that's fine. If that's twice daily, it's fine. If it's once a week, it's fine. And even some channels do pretty good with whenever it's done, it's done. The Valve method. And pretty much always go with quality over quantity. Some of the bigger channels, myself included, can get away with quantity over quality because of search results and abusing the large subscriber base and all that kind of stuff. But if you're a smaller channel, you're not going to get that luxury. Nobody's going to give you the credit for an okay video versus a good one. And I'll use the Dunkey example here. Video Game Dunkey, very popular channel. Been watching him for a long time. I think the content's hilarious. But I was watching him back when he wasn't really that popular, but he pretty much always went with quality. Dunkey might not post the video for three weeks because he doesn't feel like it, because he doesn't like the video, and when it's done, it's done, and when he posts it, everybody loves it, and it works for him. So you need to find a schedule where you can prioritize quality over quantity that works for you and never ever ever give up because patience will win in the long run and guys that's all for this video i hope you enjoyed it i hope you learned something useful if you did don't forget to like favorite and subscribe drifter out